It is a very peculiar thing to me, the lack of scope that we human beings appear to demonstrate. One very common argument that is brought up questioning the validity of God is that surely if God existed, we would be better off. Clearly, we can look around and we can see suffering and hardship and depression and misery amongst our fellow man, and we ask, how could God, in his right mind, exist knowing all of this hardship is taking, is taking place? And I suppose at a first glance, this seems like a genuine concern. Upon deeper reflection, however, I feel that it indicates to me that we lack a scope, we lack a depth, we are very, very limited in our perspective of happiness and suffering. And in this video, which I am labeling Harmony and Discord, I would like to provide some food for thought. So, allow me to begin. People consider me rather strange when I tell them things like, I thank God every day for the misery that exists. <laughs> it's very off-putting, it's very almost macabre to them, until I explain it, and if they are able to wrap their minds around it, some even agree. <clears throat> you see, it's very easy to confuse or conflate suffering, hardship, misery, and pain with an absence of God, an absence of divinity. It's, I think it's a trap that many people fall into. Um, and I feel that certainly one of the catalysts for modern-day atheism, I think a lot of people have likely experienced traumatic moments in their past, perhaps when they were children or teenagers, a moment so horrible and so subjectively painful for them that they metaphorically, or perhaps literally, threw their fists up to the sky and said, Damn it, God, where were you when I wanted you? Where were you when I needed you most? I am in pain. I am suffering. I am miserable. Where were you to heed my call? And I think that man's very, very self-involved view of divinity has played a large part in bringing us to this point. I think that much of the hesitation in regards to discussing God is this question of misery. Look at all of the suffering. How? How could God possibly exist? Well, allow me to explain to you why I thank God, the universe, the all-soul, nearly on a daily basis for the suffering that does exist. You see, in exactly the same way that a drought is the antithesis and the counterbalance to a flood, <laughs> so too is misery the counterbalance to life and living. The hardship and the struggle that you face throughout your life, well, quite frankly, as a human, is nothing compared to what most life organisms have to put up with. Bear that in mind. Perhaps that will be somewhat humbling. It seems a very ignorant thing to say, in my opinion, to observe the antelope stalked and chased down by a hungry cheetah and its flesh ripped from the bone as the cheetah satiates its hunger, and to say, surely God doesn't exist. Look at the suffering.
Of course, we don't do this for antelopes. We, we reserve this kind of judgment for human suffering. You see, it's very human-centric, if you will. Death is the countermeasure, the counterbalance to life. Every predator, every prey, the hunted and the hunter, exist for a reason, and they carry out that function on a daily basis. It is very easy to scold the fox or the wolf for eating that poor little rabbit. But you would be condemning that fox or that wolf or that coyote to death if you were to try to moralize to the wolf and to tell him, how dare you eat that rabbit, that poor defenseless rabbit? How could you make him suffer? <clears throat> I've used this analogy before. Stingrays. A stingray delicacy is spider crabs, and spider crabs breed very quickly, and stingrays feast upon the spider crabs when they are when they are in the process of, of shedding and renewing their material. And stingrays, they swoop down and they find the they find the most uh, tender spider crab, and they eat it, and then they swim away. It's very easy to point at the stingray and say, how dare you, how dare you kill, you, you ended the life of that poor spider crab. And, in, and of course, in reality, the spider crab will breed likely a dozen a batch, if not more. The stingray will likely breed a few, far less frequently. The stingray is a predator, and the spider crab a prey, for the stingray at the very least. And we have to remind ourselves that all of nature, as much as man attempts to divide himself from that nature, from the natural world, we are a part of it in exactly the same way that a tree is a part of a forest. Of course, a forest is an illusion. We just we point to a whole bunch of trees and we say that's a forest. But in any case, you are a part of the process of nature. And within nature, there exists that which we perceive to be suffering and anguish. There exists death. And that death serves a function. It always has and it always will. And we can call it suffering. We can wag our fists at the heavens, and we can proclaim that surely God must be absent. Look at the suffering. In my opinion, you should thank the gods, or God, or what you perceive to be the binding force behind it all. However you perceive it, I as a pantheist see God as the universe if you will. I use the word God in a manner of convenience. It is comprehensive, it is emotionally charged, it is relatable to the common person, and so I use this term to comprehensively have a dialogue with you. But I thank God for this process, this cause and effect predatorial process. Because without it, without it, you see, it's very easy for a naive individual to say, well, I hate seeing ducks and rabbits suffer. I wish all of their predators simply stopped feasting upon them. And so, let's say the coyote population would die out of starvation and the duck population would overbreed and overpopulate because there would be no predators to account for them. <clears throat> You see, it's very easy for the naive person, without the scope of understanding of the natural order, the food chain, whatever you'd like to call it, it's very easy for the common man to look at the world and look around him and perceive misery and death and pain 
and say, certainly, certainly God must be absent, otherwise we would all be better off. We would be living in a perpetual Garden of Eden in which predation was not even necessary, and of course that would mean that nothing would need to eat or drink or satiate its, its needs and such, which is fictitious. It's, it's fantastical. It's fantasy. Predation and death exists as the counterbalance to life. It is all part of a grander process. And because we, many of us lack the scope of understanding, we perceive all of that, that supposed suffering in the middle of that to be evidence for the absence of God. And I say to you, if you feel this way, I think that you sincerely lack an appreciation for the natural order. If you truly were to condemn all carnivorous animals, all predatory carnivorous animals, from eating herbivorous prey species, then the carnivores would depopulate because they would starve out, the herbivores would overpopulate, and they would drain the vegetation in those regions. They would eat up all the trees and leaves, and that would damage the climate. You see, all life and suffering exist to counterbalance one another. The universe is a grand and beautiful process. And in your very limited and subjective perception of the universe, do not confuse misery with an absence for God. Misery is evidence of only one thing, a countermeasure to life and sustenance and survivability. If all things were sustained, if all things could survive, we would be, we would need the ability to not have to eat or not have to drink. It is the only way. If, however, as we do, we need to sustain ourselves, then predation will always exist. But this is not suffering. You see, I called this harmony and discord as a lovely metaphor that Alan Watts once gave in a lecture of his when he said that people who lack a scope of understanding could look at how your microscopic cells and such feast upon one another. The microscopic organisms within your body appear to be in conflict with one another feasting and eating and killing one another. I mean, it sounds, it sounds dreadful. And in that very limited understanding, one might look at the body and say, look at the discord. There exists discord within your body. But you see, that conflict on a lower part of your being appears to be discord, but on a higher part, it is in fact harmony in exactly the same way that the cheetah who stalks the antelope in the fields appears to be discord on a small scale, but on the, in the larger scheme of things, the entire system of predator and prey appear to be discord, but on a higher level, it is harmony. It is the great harmony. Misery is as much a part of that process as life. This is something to consider because I think that it is high time that we get past this very egocentric notion that God can't exist because I have suffered or people I know have suffered or life is too hard. You have to step back. I am not attempting to insult you. You have, you need an eagle's eye perspective of this. On the micro scale, what appears to be discord is, on the macro scale, harmony. Harmony and discord. Food for thought. I'm Joshua. Walk with the divine. Good day.